Good morning, Facebook. How are you guys doing, man? How was the long weekend? How are you guys coping? How's that announcement? Until the end of, uh, what is it? What will be end of April, beginning? So we're only going back to work on 4th of May. So how are you guys going to cope? Please let us know. Um, it's important that we stay connected and that we stay humble and that we stay um, busy uh, thinking about things we can do. As promised today, uh, I've got uh, a gentleman by the name, of, the name of Mike Sharman on board. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing, man? Hi, Monet. I was just actually looking for a screen grab of a tweet that talks about our crazy new distant world. So while you intro me, I'm going to find that tweet and then I'm going to I'm going yeah. to give it give it a read for the for the viewers. Cool, man. Yeah. So Mike is a uh, 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 owner of a company called Retroviral. Um, he's also a, um, uh, a owner or owner or co-owner of a company called Retroactive, um, and they work in the media space where they uh, online and social media marketing. And Michael obviously elaborate a bit more around that. Um, Vimpy has just asked, "What's on the agenda today?" Vimpy, thanks for for dialing in. Um, yeah, on the agenda today is as always solutions ideas and conversation it's 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 there's no specific agenda but it's um mike how are you doing man how was the weekend wimpy conversations are like business plans you should yeah, never yeah, have yeah. One. just roll with the punches um my weekend was awesome one it was uh, it was quite full on it was my um, middle child's uh, third birthday so we had a combo right. of birthday and easter it was like the never-ending day of chocolate sweets cake and good times um i just wanted to read you this this tweet quickly so it says i spoke to an old therapist friend today and finally understood why everyone's so exhausted after the video calls it's the plausible deniability of each other's absence our minds tricked into the idea of being together when our bodies feel we're not Dissonance is exhausting. It's easier being in each other's presence or in each other's absence than in the constant presence of each other's absence. There's a thought for the day. Wow. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. It's the. Uh, it's this. Um, yeah. It's it's a constant. It's a constant. I think our minds have gone to got gone to a point where we're constantly thinking of how are we going to figure this out because it's something that's never happened to us. We don't understand mm -hmm. this presence of not being present and but being present it's it's a it's a it's an absolute absolute uh i'm not going to swear but it it, mind it, it boggles the mind it boggles yeah. Yeah, mind if mike um before this uh, lockdown what were you guys busy with what are you what do you um what can you divulge um uh, you know before we you obviously you obviously have a business two few a few businesses that you run in your interest in uh, different different spheres of 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 media what were you guys busy with uh, so far this year um it, it's quite I mean, an interesting one and i think that um you know i've been in the very fortunate position that a lot of our clients are retainer based so our bread and butter is managing social media pages creating content for brands on a monthly basis whether that be rich media or still content and most of those clients haven't been affected too hectically in the short period. I think the long tail will start showing like how much impact has actually been on those different brands and individuals. But um, yeah, a whole host of brands that we're working with, um, including the likes of Rocker Mamas, Russell Hobbs, uh, Lillette's, the uh, Martin and Martin pet food brands, um, Liberty, uh, a lot of internal comms for them. So it really is a cross section of brands on the sports side. Uh, we're still doing a lot of work with Ryobi after having worked with them on a really exciting campaign during the Dakar period with their rider, Kirsten Lantman. Um, it achieved all kinds of record breaking PR results and um, busy entering it into some of the awards that are still taking place this year. So for us, it's definitely not business as usual. It's business unusual, but um, we took the decision as a business to encourage people to start working from home after President Ramaphosa's first speech and first announcement. So from about the 17th of April, um, I mean, March, sorry, I've lost track of, of the months and days. 17th Coming. of March, yeah, 17th of March was when we started working full-time remotely. And uh, we were a team of about 15, and we were also in the fortunate position that, you know, our business was all Google Drive orientated. So all of our single sign-ins via Google, the ability to access content via the Google Drive. So it, it's made the transition a lot 
easier than I think most companies that were potentially layered in what Richmond Holland calls legacide and, and you know, the suicide of, of legacy. And um, yeah, I think that the, the main pivot from our comms perspective has been to really help calm clients, keep them feeling that they can be assured that we've, we've dealt with crisis before, we're in another crisis, this too shall pass. And yeah, we, we, we're just looking at ways in which we can take our content plans and we can refine according to what makes the most sense in these really wow circumstances. Mike, to that point, it, 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 do, would you say in hindsight now, being 2020 vision, hindsight is, um, are you, you in the space where you were actually by default, um, uh, I wouldn't say perfectly, but let's just use the word perfectly positioned for, for this kind of, this kind of situation. I mean, you've, you've, you've literally just carried on working in a different way, but you guys are still carrying on. So I find it a lot more difficult because as creative beings, you almost have this desire to brainstorm in a group of other people. And the barrier that digital video conferencing and broadcasting provides you is that you almost, you lose the ability to read the room. And we've still had pictures, oh, yeah. and we've still had presentations. But for me, with the pictures, I'm very energy driven. So for me, when I can't be in a room with people, like there's definitely a feeling of missing. So the other day, last week, we had a pitch. And at the start of the call, I hadn't met all the people on the call, which is also, it's a, it's a strange phenomenon. And when you're in presentation mode for a pitch, you don't get to see people's eyes. You don't get to see the body language. You don't get to read all of these subconscious things that you didn't know that your body was doing until it was taken away. And for me, I like to start off those sessions and say, guys, we are all in business unusual here. We're having this presentation digitally. Please, can I assign some kind of onomatopoeia to each of you on the call? So, Monet, you get ooh. Vimpy, you get ah. You know? John, you get ah. And you get cool. Because that way, at least, you're encouraging those audience members to engage with you and and communicate verbally where they would have communicated non-verbally in the past. And I think that from an energy-driven individual, it definitely helps to be able to have those moments when you can have some kind of interaction and engagement because it just it keeps your energy up. And in our world of storytellers and presentations, energy is the most important thing. Energy is how we sell. If we can get excited and passionate about an idea, then we can uh, convey that excitement and energy to the prospective client. Uh, last year, it was quite an interesting scenario. I, I was given almost like a COVID-19 dummy exercise. I was at OR Tambo. I had meetings all day and I was cutting it fine to get to the airport to fly to Cape Town. And I was going to be doing um, a, a keynote at a future females event in Cape Town. About 250, 300 people in the room. And I got to OR Tambo and it was the most weird freak storm that just came out of nowhere. And every single airline was grounded for five or six hours that day. And every time when it looked like we're going to board, we're going to board, there were further delays. And OR Tambo was in like this perfect like eye of the storm pocket where, you know, you'd watch Twister or one of those movies. You, yeah. you, you felt that there was actually going to be a tornado ripping through OR Tambo that day. The, the, the clouds were so black and you would just, you realized that you were going absolutely nowhere. And I said to the organizers, I said, listen, I, I'm really not going to make it. I know like I've cut things fine, but this really is an act of God that not even I can pay someone to to take me on a charter or get me there quicker. So we're going to just have to call it. And they said, oh, don't you think you can still present digitally? And I was like, oh, I was a little bit hesitant. But the, the only place I could find that was quiet at our Tambo was a toilet, a, one of those unisex toilets in um, in the slow lounge. So I went and set up my laptop there. The internet was fast enough. And I sat in the toilet and I presented a 45 minute keynote and I had on my WhatsApp, I had one of the organizers, she would ping me after each section to let me know what the audience's reaction was because I couldn't see individual faces or I couldn't see individual reactions yeah. and responses. And um, that, was my, that was my dummy test run for presenting to an audience via Videocon. And uh, oh, I miss people, man. That's the, the part of this whole whole lockdown that I miss the most is 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 the real life dissemination of energy during the way that we present and the way that we, we kind of try and form ideas and bring them to life. 
So the signal slowly broke up there, broke broke up there a little bit. Yeah, Mike, I agree with you. It's as we are social beings, and in the nature of what we do, uh, me shooting on set, uh, dealing with pictures, dealing with uh, with with briefs and stuff like that. You, it's a you're right. It's a it's a very human human driven process, and 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 uh, yeah, I do I do miss that, and and uh, I agree with you. The, the day will come where we will have a, you know be able to shake hands and give a give her one of those bro hugs again. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, Mike, you're, you're uh, just to just to go go a little bit off off, off topic, but still uh, all about you. Um, your book. Um, I'm not going to say the words. You can say you can say. Uh, could you talk about talk about your book and what what that has done, what that has brought you and done in the process, and just tell, take us through the, the, your 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 author author hat. Yeah, so that is quite interesting. I mean. Um, I've been fortunate enough to talk at a lot of marketing conferences uh, since the early 2010s. And for me, I've always had this view that we never wanted to build the biggest agency, but we wanted to build the best. And uh, a lot of people have views on content and storytelling. And you know, there's so much cliche and, and so many overused expressions out there that I always like to try and find unique angles or find the trends that are about to explode so that we can then run with those and we can be the first to market to leverage a certain social platform or you know, a different way of doing content. And um, for me, I always used to speak about how they started off in digital. There were a lot of dicks in digital. I don't want to be the biggest dick. I want to be the best dick. And, and I think that that phrase applies to any industry. I think we're seeing it now. Like There are a lot of dicks in business in general. And unfortunately, a lot of us won't make it through this crisis unscathed. You know, some people will have to shut down. I'm hearing stats of you know, job losses in the high 300,000s and, and, and counting. And um, for me, I think the realization of that is, is more relevant now than ever. And um, that's why the book is titled The Best Deck, because whatever you're doing, you should strive to continuously be the best. Because yeah. when you're the best, clients don't haggle over margin. They don't haggle over your pricing structure. They don't look at you like a line item at a grocery store. They look, you, uh, they look at you as a valuable contributor and aid to their business or to their brand. And I think that for me, that's that's the lesson that we try and take through all of these hard times is like, just continue to be the best. I spoke to you off air earlier about some projects that we're working on and, and with Ryobi, you know, we were planning on doing um, during self isolation or social distancing, we were planning on doing um, a live stream from the actual Ryobi headquarters. Then plans changed so quickly in this day and age that we went into full lockdown. So instead of just giving up on that concept, we said, like, how can we pivot and how can we use the technology at hand to make that work? So then we partnered with one of our good friends, uh, Simi Arif, who is a comedian and who happens to love DIY. So uh, we're in the third episode of a weekly series of DIY Lockdown with Simi, which you can check out on the Ryobi Africa Facebook page. And we've gone and we've you know, we've totally humbled ourselves. This isn't about the best production quality. This isn't about the most immense storytelling with DOPs and lighting and all of that stuff. It's like, how can we create content that every day men and women can aspire to create? Something you can do with your kids during lockdown. Everything from creating a ring to this recent episode, he created a shelf using three pieces of wood and some 30 degree angles. It's something that all of us can create in half an hour to an hour to keep our minds and our kids busy. And, you know, for me, I think that's the, the greatest lesson is like, how can you pivot? How malleable can you be? And, um, yeah, this time has been, has been fortunate in the sense that we've had to prioritize life or death scenarios. This is uh, SME Darwinism at its finest. Yeah, I've, I, I, you, you've mentioned so many things in that, um, in, 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 in that bit that uh, my mind goes, my mind starts spinning when you start talking. But, yeah, it's like you said, uh, I, I keep on saying, let's, let's should focus on what we can do instead of what we can't do. Because if you get, if you get rid of the given, you can focus on on what the what the way forward is. Mike, um, what have you got lined up for this year? Uh, you know, this lockdown is supposed to end. Uh, 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 you know, we're all back at work apparently at the fourth of May, but I don't think it's going to be business as usual. And how are you going to adapt to? Well, it's a difficult. I suppose it's a difficult question. But how do how does one look at? positioning yourself now for this i think it's going to be a slow release almost it's not going to be wham bam we're back to work yeah. it's um 
it's going to be a slow release in my mind. What do you? What was your opinion on, on on that thing? And how do you? How would you? How would you position your business to to carry on? You know, I've got, I've got this saying that I that I use um, in some of the talks that I give, and it's that the more digitally savvy we become, the more we crave human interaction. And I think that this exercise has proven that. And and for me, network and relationships is the most important aspect of any form of business. And what better time now than to reach out to any of those past people that you've worked with, um, whether they've been suppliers or whether they've been clients, and to reach out to them and say, hey, this is what I'm working on. I mean, you in this specific example, you know, how many corporates can you reach out to that you've worked with before to say, cool, yeah. Let's help set up a, a mini webinar or a mini broadcast for your next board meeting because most board meetings are going to be in lockdown for the foreseeable future. So yeah. just one or two small decisions like that can still allow and enable you to generate income without necessarily needing you to change your whole world. And you've already got the setup here and we're having the conversation. So, you know, just some, some things like that is like, who are the people that you can reach out to and say, I can provide value to you and your business and here's one starting point of an opportunity that that I can provide. And I think for anyone that is tuned in or watches this at any stage, it's like you don't have to change your ecosystem, your universe, your world so drastically. You don't have to just shut shop and move on to something new. You don't have to move from being in full media and marketing to say, well, I better pull out those old accounting textbooks. Looks like my parents are right. That battle of accounts yeah. it is for me. Um, and, and I think that most of the people that would watch and tune into this we're creative beings so we we solve problems creatively on a daily basis for our clients so it's time for us to look inwards and solve our problems creatively for our own selves now and that's um and that's the tip of the day really without sounding like a douche <laughs> you're just saying excuse me for looking around i'm just looking for comments and i, I, I keep on thinking i'm not looking at the camera and i always tell presenters look at the camera and i'm, oh, I'm looking good. at your face <laughs> Mike, um, uh, uh, words of encouragement for the viewers, and the viewers are quite wide. I mean, I, uh, I suppose you know, eventually, when people watch this, it's 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 all spheres of business people, um, random friends on Facebook, um, your network, our network, my network. Um, what would you what would you be, how would you encourage people to 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 you know, you're saying you're cycling in your in your cul de sac, and you had your birth, you had your daughter, your middle child's birthday. Um, you know, that's that's how would you encourage people to cope in this time if 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 you would like to go that far as to as to as to give advice? Um, you know, I love the the African idiom or adage of how do you eat an elephant? Yeah. And the answer is quite simply one bite at a time. And for me, you can't look too far in the future and you can't look too far ahead in your day. So I, I believe there needs to be some form of routine. It needs to be like a reason of, of why you're getting up in the morning. Um, at our business, we have a daily powwow session where at quarter past eight, we dial into the hangout and we have the conversations with one another. And that's generally like it's a, one of those stand up meetings. Cool. What are you dealing with? What are you struggling with today? How can we get through that? So that gives you the semblance of uh, normality and, and routine structure. And then at the same time, it's like, what are the things that you're doing to keep your mind occupied in both intellectual yeah. and also in passive side of things? So there's a huge amount of incredible content through streaming services, through YouTube, etc. And, um, you know, for me, like, I love the docu style content. I, I'm a huge fan of, of real world authentic storytelling. Love yeah. F1 Drive to Survive. I'm so bummed that the F1 series has been delayed now because of uh, of lockdown. And we don't know when season three is going to be out. I've, I've finished one and two. Um, so now I'm looking for yeah. other kinds of sport content. Uh, I think Sunderland Till I Die or, you know, something. One of those pieces of, of content are definitely going to come in, uh, in interestingly in the next couple of days. And, yeah, do you read? Do you watch content? Do you play with your kids, with the dog, the run around the garden? I've seen people do half Ironmans, full Ironmans, half marathons, two oceans in their gardens or around their, their block. And I think that, you know, like you will drive yourself absolutely crazy if you don't find something to have an outlet or some form of stimulation. Um, we had an idea for a digital product to help sports people and athletes. And that was something that it was taking a little bit of time. It was always being put on the back burner um, because, you know, you have so many other distractions in your day. Then all of a sudden lockdown happened and we said, listen, guys, we've got to fast track this thing because sports people too, they're going to be in a whole new world when they come out of this. And yeah. if we can try and launch 
at the end of lockdown and something that's valuable and relevant to a global sporting fraternity, boom, let's get this thing rocking and rolling. So I think that the levels of desire and needs wants all facilitate the way in which you're going to make those solves during this time. And uh, 35 days is a long time for you to actually launch something or pivot or make a plan and make a solution when you are in deep lockdown. <laughs> I saw Richard Hammond yesterday. He did a, uh, from the Drive Tribe, he did a around the driveway tour and he was doing another BMW and he arrived at a Porsche and he said, oh, look, there's a Porsche. And then he gives it a whole review of the point. He drives a little bit further, crashes his thing into a game. It was such a, you know, fun little piece. His daughter was filming it. Um, yeah. And it's just a, such a fantastic thing. And then I see on Instagram, Ronaldo was busy gymming and his kids were all playing all over him. So he used them to, to lift, you know, <laughs> lift both his kids up to use them as weights to, to gym, you know, yeah. and it's, I think there's a lot of inspiration um, happening out there. People, people are doing quite things. Um, sorry, my people are doing quite a few things, um, inspirational things, your, yourself included. Um, yeah, and this, as you said, we need an outlet. This is my outlet. I hope you guys uh, appreciate that and 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 learn from this. Um, Mike, is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we we part ways and you go and do what you need to do on a on a Tuesday? No, I mean I think that. Um the most important thing that that I've experienced is just like there's such an overdose of COVID content, and it is. It's like, yeah, it's paralysis. It's paralysis by pandemic because there's so much noise out there. And I think that the best advice is to try and reduce your social media content consumption because that's where all the negativity brews, and that's what yeah. those platforms thrive on. Like the more panicked you are, and the more you're feeding the Zuckerberg machine and scrolling through Facebook and engaging in the content, the more value you are to advertisers. And um, if you have the opportunity to break away from your screen for a bit and actually just stop and smell the newly pollution free roses, I mean, it gives you an opportunity to really take something fresh in and yo, know, we're all in this together. I think that's, that's the comforting thing for me is that there are hardships. People are going to lose their jobs, including people watching and, and consuming this content. And, and that's a harsh reality that we're faced with. But yeah. we're, all in, we're all in this together. We've um, fortunately never had to suffer on the scale of a world war or a, any of those levels. And the world is our oyster. And however creative you want to be or however creative you can be with your problem solving, you have the ability to solve enormous problems for clients. Then now it's time for you to step back and do it for yourself. Yeah, I think it's it's all about balance, man. It, it's it's it, I try and teach my kids all the time. It's all about balance. There's a certain time for everything, and if you if you do one thing too much, it's going to affect you in another area. Um, and I agree with you. Social media is the is the is an is, is an amazing thing, but uh, it's all about balance. It's consuming it in a in a in a in a balanced way. Um, how many times can I say balance in the one in one <laughs> sentence? <laughs> Mike, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, your willingness to to and um, yeah, I appreciate the relationship as well. Thank you very much for 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 having us on, for for being on on my show. Um, Thanks, and uh, yeah, here's to here's to many many successful years to come. And and um, yeah, thank you. And right back at you. Hope this uh, leads to some great opportunities that there are brands watching that say, sure, we should actually do some uh, some webinars or some board meetings via via stream because this is a game changer. Yeah. And uh, thanks so much for having me. It's been an awesome chat. Cool, Mike. Have a fantastic day and go enjoy your family and uh, whatever's left over of the business day on a Tuesday. Cheers, brother. Yeah, fantastic uh, conversation with Mike. Thank you very much to to him. Um, some, I think, I think you, I think you, you would be, go and check out Mike's profile, go and check out the website, go and see what he's doing. There's some valuable information that he's given us on how to go forward instead of step becoming stagnant. And, and I think, uh, it's, it's also, also about balance and tomorrow, I hope you're ready. She's a straight talker. She, uh, is short. Um, but uh, dynamite comes in small packets. It's the epitome of of of, of Debbie from uh, um, the, uh, from the ex presenter from Carte Blanche. Um, I think you'll be have value in in in. She's quite entertaining and uh, she's a funny funny person and uh, and a good friend. And um, yeah, I think um, 
join us tomorrow at 11. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and here's to bigger things to come. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, what's that other one? Please subscribe, comment, and uh, press the like button. I think it is. Guys, thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.